Hey everybody, welcome back to the Real Debaters Podcast. I am Michael Petro. This week on the show, we got a special features for you. That's where me and one of the cast members get to sit down with someone in the film and television industry. We beg and plead and bug them with questions and say, would you come on the show and make us look legitimate? And and when they say yes, it, it puts us over the moon. So we've got Darren Frost, comedian and voice actor Darren Frost on the show. Rolling through Winnipeg a couple weeks ago, he did a sit at Yuck Yucks. Jimmy was like, hey, we do a podcast. Come talk to us, please. And he was so... So cool and so chill and so funny. So thank you very much, Darren, for for letting us into your hotel room, which is where we do the interview. By the way, we're in the famous haunted hotel of the Fort Gary doing this thing. Uh, so we get to talk to him about some of his credits. What are they? What are they here? I should I should have had this ready. Total Drama Rama, Back Again, Battle Planet. Those are his most recent ones. He's done Arthur. He was on Murdoch Mysteries. He jumps from voice acting to actually being a character. Uh, Elliot, the littlest reindeer, wish fart, go away unicorn. Uh, so we get to talk to him about uh, forming a character, doing voice work, what it, what what goes into behind the scenes of being a voice actor, and 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 you know making your voice stay in working order as much as possible. That's a that's a big thing for a voice actor to lose. I'm rambling. Anyway, so Darren Frost is on the show. Uh, as for housekeeping and shit, we are doing movies in the park again. If you've heard me talk about it, follow us on our social media to know what dates. And subscribe to the show so you never miss out when we're going to be there. Uh, we actually will tell you now. We're going to be there August, uh, first weekend in August, last weekend, September long weekend. Uh, we'll be doing Soul and E.T. opening night. It's going to be so much fun to see E.T. on the big screen again. And uh, Soul's a fantastic Disney movie. I'm not a big Pixar guy. You've heard me talk on the show. Not huge in animation, but I did love, I love Soul's Got Soul. And then uh, at the end of the month, uh, September long weekend, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and Super Mario Brothers. It's me, I'm Mario. Uh, it's going to be a good time. Uh, we're going to be hosting those nights. We've just been asked to host, so we said yes humbly. Thank you, Joy. Uh, she's the she's our connection at Assiniboine Park. She says yes to all this stuff. So uh, thank you very much for for giving us those duties. We will we will uh, we'll represent the park in pride. Uh, we won't let you down. We promise. Uh, we've already had this conversation. But anyways, uh, so yeah, we'll be hosting. So if you see us sitting down by our our table and we're talking about the movie that's playing, feel free to come over and uh, share your opinion on the matter, or after the movie, too, if you want. And then we can hang out, and you can tell us all about why you love E.T. so much or why soul meant so much to you, right? Why soul hit you in the soul. Uh, so, again, follow us on our social media. That's Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook, at Real Debaters Pod on Instagram and Twitter. The Real Debaters Podcast on Facebook and at RD Pod Shorts on YouTube. I think I did that right all in one take this time. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, that's where everything is can be seen, heard, uh, made aware of what's going on in our universe. And then uh, RD Podcast Shorts, or RD Pod Shorts, sorry, is uh, where you get to see us, our, our short form content, so to speak. Uh, but you got to subscribe to the show to always be in the know. I didn't mean to rhyme there. And uh, by doing that, it's also free. We show up every week. We give you some laughs. We hope we do. And then uh, you're, you're, we're all better for it. So subscribe to the show and whatever podcast player you're listening to us on right now. That means a whole fuck ton to the podcast people. Podcasts around the world, if you like them, you should just subscribe to them. You don't have to always buy our merch or follow us on social media. Just subscribe to the show. That's the biggest thing. And then let us know what you want to hear. That would also be cool, too. Anyways, I'm rambling, so thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. I give you Darren Frost with me and Jimmy Skinner in a hotel room in the Fort Gary Hotel talking about voice acting. I will cue that real, and you enjoy the show. Let's tidy up this tangle of film by putting it on a reel. Here is a motion picture film, a thousand feet, 16,000 separate photographs. Welcome, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Real Debaters Podcast. I am one of your table hosts, Mike Petro. And I'm Jimmy Skinner. We are in the Fort Gary Hotel. Spooky. Spooky. No, we're not here to do a ghost hunt, ladies and gentlemen. That's for giving up the ghost in Winnipeg. Mm-hmm. What we are here for is somehow, some way, Jimmy Skinner convinced Darren Frost to come on the show right before his show tonight at Yuck Yucks. At, yes. At the yes. brand new comedy club here. Yep. So first of all, thank you, Darren, for, My pleasure. for coming on. Um, you didn't have to buzz it too much, did you? No, no, no. <laughs> nice and easy. I got time. He makes Come the on transition by. smooth. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Jimmy, Jimmy approached me and said that you were in town and that you had done a ton of stuff in the voice acting community, mm-hmm. and in in being in comedy and Jimmy being in comedy, I was like, this is perfect. We haven't, we've never talked to somebody who's done the voice work, 
and our whole special features aspect of this is kind of like who you are, how you did it, right? And then the work, right? Yeah. How it all goes into it. So yeah. we don't have voice acting unless we have at some point in your comedy career where you kind of started to maybe deviate from the stage yes. and get into it. So where did all that start, essentially? So generally what happened is I was a, I became a stand-up comic. I was a comic for probably at least five or ten years. Um, and then I will probably definitely kind of like five or seven. And then I moved into commercial work, so on-camera commercial work. And a lot of comics, you'll not even know a lot of actors in commercials are comedians. Until you see them live, you know, so, oh my God, that's the person that's from that guy. commercial or whatever, right? Or you see their special. Yeah. And mainly that's because comedians are very good at being funny very quickly. And commercials, other than whoring, you got 30 <laughs> seconds, Yeah. right? Like yeah. you got 30 seconds. Let's get to it. You got to get to it. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, theater actors or Second City actors who also do very well at it too, don't get me wrong, but comics are like, I can nail this in 10 seconds. Yeah. I've been doing this kind of thing for whatever. And that's what happened to me. So I had a run of commercials. I did like 50 commercials in like three years. Wow. So I did like some pretty big campaigns that were still kind of well known. I was the Listerine bottle in the that's giant right. outfit and uh, <laughs> yeah, that ran were. around and, and did crazy things. And I had the famous one because I had a, um, a commercial with Adam West that I did with, and that was super cool to do. Holy list to read back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was the whole premise of it. The, the commercial is he's at a book signing. I come in in the Listerine bottle and, and you know, stuff happens. Amp it up, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that, that was great. Uh, and then I took a voice class. Because people kept saying, hey, you got a unique voice. You know, you don't sound like a, a dude. You know, um, and in these days, that's good. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I would always get that. You know, I'd order something, and they'd say, "That's twelve forty, ma'am." You know, Thank drive you, up to yeah. the window. Fuck I would get it all the time. And so, in cartoons, a lot of boys are voiced by young women, yeah. like women, right? Because right. women's voices don't change as much as men's voices through the ages. So right. Nancy sounds like a young boy. She's always going to sound like a young boy. Yeah. That's one of the problems, not to get too deep into the baseball of voiceovers, but... Oh, please do. Yeah. Like, when you have a kid doing a kid role, so there's a show called Arthur, okay? Right. Yes. Massive show, yeah, right? right not a lot of people realize, Arthur has gone, like, 30 years, it just ended last year, almost the same run that The Simpsons had. Yeah, that's right? insane. Right? So everyone always talks about The Simpsons, The Simpsons, The Simpsons, and that. no one ever talks about Arthur. Well, Arthur is on PBS, which is, right. you know, public-funded television, and Simpsons is on Fox. By a tote bag. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but Arthur, the actual role of Arthur has been replaced, like, three or four times. You wouldn't even know. Right, no. because they, they age out, because they would always use kids. I know. Wow. Right? So young kids, their voice cracks, and then... They're not that they're done, but they're done doing young boy Kid voices. Yeah, yeah. Then they go into the category of all the other voices that every dude and, and person is trying to get. So it's a little bigger of a pond. Interesting. So I kept on getting here. You don't sound like a woman a lot. You've got a higher pitched voice. That's good for cartoons. You're yeah. an angry comic. Like, that's my style. If you look me up, you'll see that. And anger plays a lot in cartoons. So anyways, I took this course. It was a voiceover course, not a cartoon course, just a voiceover course. And the uh, director of the session, or the, who ran the thing, is an actual casting director. Oh. So everyone's sitting there. There's like 12 of us, like six guys, six girls. And the person running it, uh, her name is Karen. She's getting everyone to go in the booth and read like Levi's spots or Dentine commercials cool. or whatever, right? So everyone goes in. It's like the sexy Levi's. Oh, you look real good in those Levi's. Whatever it was. The whole thing was sex appeal Levi's. That right. was the commercial. I did like two takes and she goes, okay, stop. Okay, leave the booth, please. So I walk out of the booth. Oh, no, I come oh, sit down. She goes, don't take this the wrong way. You're never getting the sexy Levi's type work. <laughs> not the Marlboro Man. No. Right? You're not, you're not gonna be that guy. Yeah. What you're gonna do well in is cartoon work. So for the rest of that weekend, I did a couple commercial things, but the majority of it, I did cartoon voices in that, that seminar. Sure. And then literally two or three weeks later, she brought me in to lead for the role because they were replacing Harlan Williams for Ned's Newt, Ooh. which was a big show back in the day. Yeah, yeah. I didn't get it, but you know I did well. Yeah. Like I, I, you know, I, and she said you did well, and that kind of got me in, and that kind of started my career. So if I wouldn't have taken this class, and if this person wasn't honest with me, like a lot of seminars you take, they just want your money. They don't exactly. really care, yeah, right? Yeah. She's like, no, no. I'm just going to be honest with you. I, just tell me. To give I'm, you the direction. Yeah. I'm never going to be a leading man in a movie. I know that because the way I look. 
right? Like, understand. yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? But my voice, I don't know where my voice sits. She does. She's the expert. She's okay, the fine. That's and that so led me into the cartoon world, and I really, literally started booking com- uh, cartoons almost right away. So That's I incredible. booked a show called Timothy Goes to School, which was a really I've big preschool I've heard show. Yeah, yeah. Um, then I booked um, a, a couple other shows. Uh, Gahan Wilson's The Kid was an HBO show. I did a couple episodes of that. And then it just kind of snowballed in, and I started doing cartoon work. And I still do cartoon work to this day. I've noticed. Your credits yeah. are up till 2022, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. Year. I mean, I just did a cartoon voice like two months ago. What was it for? I can't tell you. Cool. Got it. Oh. Got it. Yeah, we run into that a lot on the yep. show. Um, when's it coming out? Do we know that? Next year. Next year? Okay, okay we'll watch yeah. for it. you got to show us that. Now, the, the, the world is a lot of non-disclosure agreements. Yeah. So up until right. five, seven years ago, I never signed a non-disclosure agreement. Didn't even know what it was, probably. Right? I, I knew what it was, but it wasn't prevalent. Now it's very prevalent because it's scripts easy for get leaked. To get out. Yeah. Things get leaked. Yeah. You know, they don't want people to know there may be a reboot of this show or there's a new episodes or they're replacing a character, which is very, they don't want anyone to know right. that. Why yeah. Well, and I mean, like, you, you bring up a valid point, like the, the Rick and Morty stuff right then and there, right? Right. We all know that that replacement happened. And I imagine the new guy who's doing Bugs mm-hmm. sounds just like the old guy who's doing yes. Bugs. But for the world to know that, that would maybe irk some people. So. Yeah, I mean, if you're a diehard Rick and Morty fan, maybe you just feel like I, it's not the same show anymore. Yeah. But, you know, if all the other fans who don't care, who just like the writing in the show, they're yeah. going to tune in. They're going to be happy. They're going to be happy. Yeah. So cartoons have exploded in the last 10 years, but Indeed. something Whoa. else that has exploded is the fandom of cartoons. Yeah. It's cool. And, which is cool, but the opinions <laughs> on where cartoons yeah, should so cool. go. Yeah. And, and this, and... Not once again, not to get too inside baseball, but people don't understand why decisions are made on the other side. No, we don't. Right? We don't. And there's so many reasons. Like what? Like like is is that in like? Wh- like for example, in yeah. Canada, if I don't live in, if I didn't live in Canada, I couldn't do any of my cartoons. Wow. Because a lot of my cartoons are based on tax credits. Wow. Right. So they go, why can't you get this person to do this cartoon? Right. It's like, well, there's all this business. That you have no idea about yeah. that things are funded through government grants and tax credits that they have to have rules set up that so many canadians which is smart yeah you're gonna yeah. get the government money you can't just bring in a bunch of americans and just do it here well and that's being fought over all day right now with netflix being in canada yes making canadian content for canadians right. instead of just getting our lovely 65 percent tax credit right. yes. which manitoba offers right and that's, that's that's the dark side of the industry that nobody wants well, it's not so much I a dark, dark side, but, but like, it's it's a side of the industry that the average person who watches a show and then they make changes and they get upset about it. You can be upset about a change. I get it. Yeah. But they don't understand maybe why. You know, sometimes something happens at the, with right. the actor that you don't know what happened. Yeah. And nobody That's wants it to be public. To be. Yeah. It's not public. So let's just not talk about it and we move on. Interesting. Right. There's a lot of that. But so fans get upset and... Like I was in a show, that. Total Drama Rama, yeah, which is yeah, yeah, yeah. you know a young kid's version of Total Drama Island, yeah. and uh, I love doing the show. But the Total Drama Island fans are very, very vocal because they like that show. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is a new show. This isn't the same show. Yeah. So they have their feelings on why are you doing these shows and not keep doing these shows. I, and you know what? Being in this, being like. I work fresh in this in regards to having media credentials and, and being mm-hmm. around in the industry for a while. But I don't, I've never liked that. It's like, here's a total drama rama, if I'm not mistaken, is like the younger version of the kids from drama. Yeah, they're all going to daycare now. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of funny, right? Like, if you're following a show and all of a sudden you get a different version of your character, you yeah. Should, you should be happy. You should be happy yeah. that they're expanding the world and playing the what if this happened game. Or, um, and I have to be careful what I say here. Sure. Um, or just be happy the show is continuing. Yeah. Agreed. Period. Because yeah. you don't know the reasons why they're making those decisions. And I don't even know the reasons yeah. why this show, this other show isn't continuing and they had to switch gears. Right. You know, things are done. Like, deals are done with the Cartoon Network and, and Teletoon and YTV. You have no idea what YTV is like. You know what? This year we're trying to do this. That show doesn't fit it anymore. Doesn't matter about the ratings per se, which sounds ridiculous, but I've been on a lot of shows that were highly rated and still got canceled. Because it didn't fit the theme. 
people That's change. A, yeah. Well, you're 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 in the ether. You're in the culture, right? Right. So whatever the culture is, you're trying to talk about it or showcase it or whatever whatever have you. You know, and business decisions are made for yeah. other business reasons. Yeah. And the fandom, some get it. Some take it very personal. But some take it very personal <laughs> because you know what? I've invested five years in a show. You know, I went from age twelve to seventeen with this show. Those are important years. Sure, yeah. You know, they tie you to the kind of the rest of your life, and you have an opinion. That's and the it's, social media generation too. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like me, when I talk about my cartoons now, like I'm talking about He Man and yeah. GI Joe and all, like yeah. the, you know, the 1.0 stuff. We we still love it. But yes. Now, if I had an, an opinion box in my hand, very easy to share it. Very right. easy to share it. And right. Very easy to get toxic. Whereas before, you just argued with your friends on the playground. <laughs> yeah. You know, like I think Shira sucks, and the girl said I think it's great, and you know that's the arguments that you had there, and that's Watch where it was. Walk away. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. crazy. Um, what what's what what is an experience like? We'll start there because I, I like anybody who listens who doesn't know how an industry works and right off the hop you're telling us all about the business aspect of it which is very interesting for anybody like it just gives you a different perspective of the thing you're watching and how to appreciate it so bird's eye view what is what is voice acting how does it take us through a day so just so you understand a lot of people also understand how cartoons are mostly made they are started with the obviously a script yeah let's start there first and and so a script is written it's revised 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 then once they get so many scripts, then they'll have auditions, right? They might do a pilot, and then they put it together, and then they present it to a cartoon network. Very or similar to any feature streaming show. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the difference is, like, once all the scripts are done, all the voice is done, generally, for wow. a season, before animation or other things are done. Sometimes oh, not, wow. if it's taking a long time to do it, but a lot of times they've pretty much done all the voice work first, and then they draw to the voice unless it's Japanimation because then it's redubbing right. so the, the, the picture is already done yeah. and now you're matching the flats of the voice and you're running a script and you're watching the mouth move and you're and telling me so many cool things that's, that's, that's a lot harder uh, Japanimation is 10 times harder to do than regular cartoon because you're timing it's all about timing it's not it, I'd love to say oh my heart's in it and, and I've got a character but I don't want to lie. I don't lie. Uh, so it's not that there's no art there, but it's less because you're matching time. When you can just read, a, 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 if I'm a character and I'm just reading a script and I'm this character, I can take my time. They can tell me do it faster, do it slower, it angrier, slower, or whatever. Yeah. In Japan animation, it's always about matching. you know matching that time. Yeah. And then if you don't get it right, like in the reading, they might change it. But timing is a lot of it. So it's very hard. You're literally just a mouthpiece at that point. I mean, well, I mean, there is acting in it. Yeah. But but it's all about the timing, right? So that's why it's, it's a division there of how cartoons are made. So Japan animation, the cartoon's already done. You're matching voices. It's done. They match it together. It goes out. So they're matching your voice to a character as opposed to having the character drawn first and then you're pu- putting... Well, the they've already in. probably got the pictures of what the characters oh, okay. look so there like. Is some, there is some yes, there. Okay. but matching the mouth and then maybe some of the movements to the character, that's in a non-Japanese cartoon. They have a little bit more leeway there. Wow. So they do the voices, then they animate it, then they bring you back in to fix up any things okay. like to the, to the picture. Um, that's called ADR work. Yeah. That's called additional dialogue. Um, recording and then it goes out and the show is kind of all locked, locked in all the special effects and then it's done so then when you're talking about actually recording the voice yeah, yeah. what that means is so you audition for a role you might get what they call a callback so it'll start out with like 100 people uh, you know auditioning right. gets down to like probably 7 to 10 then those 7 to 10 audition again and same then, machine no matter what priority. yeah it's the same as on camera because yeah, I've done yeah. both yeah. and then you get the role and then from there, you get a script. You do a, an episode. Now, pre-COVID, a lot of that was going into a studio. Yeah. And that was, Are you, you know, together with everybody else? Once Pre-COVID, it depends on what your character is and what the show is. Okay. okay. So if you're a lead and there's another lead that you have a lot of back and forth with, yeah. a lot of times they would because the energy of having them together is considerably better than recording it individually. Improv, it, it, the magic. Yeah, 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 yes, yeah, right. Yeah. But now, due to COVID, a lot, of, almost everything is solo. Now, did they keep it that way after? Because they realized it cut back on 
uh-huh. cost because I am I, I'm just in my head I'm like it would be so much fun to have three or four of us all around the mics riffing and and, and right. try it like this try it like that and to get rid of that for cost aspect because I I I, I, well, I only know what I know it <laughs> seems that that's still going like that's the new way almost or is so so pre COVID very few people had their own home studio. Yeah. So most people had to go into Toronto, no matter where you live. And so, like, for me, sorry. Big time. All good. Laura. Go. I got to take this. Take it, man. Don't worry. Hey, Laura, is everything okay? Yeah, how are you? How are you? Good. I'm just doing a podcast right now. Can, can I call you later? Oh, yeah, totally. Do you want to talk tomorrow? Yes. Okay. Okay, I'll talk. Okay, bye. Okay, we'll talk soon. Sorry about that. No, no worries, dude. No worries. Let me turn this off. We get up and go pee all the time on our show. <laughs> there's breaks. Like we're 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 low rent. What was I saying right before that interrupted me? You were saying pre-COVID, no one had a home studio. Yes. Okay. That's an important point. So let me just turn this. Yeah. On. Yeah. Don't worry. Oh, airplane mode. There we go. So um, pre-COVID, everyone had to go and they would go in a studio, and there would be a group. Like so, when I did Camp Lake Bottom, that was pre-COVID. We get sometimes five or six characters in the room, and we do the whole script, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Because you know, you're hey, how you doing? What you doing? You know, the one girl, she was on Arthur for 27 years. Jeez. So we talk about that. I'm like, what's it like to have a role for 27 years? Yeah. And she's like, oh my god, it was great. And you know, it's a gift that keeps on giving. That's what we always say. In you, the if my memory serves, you have 68 credit, 68 episodes on Camp Lake. Yeah, it, was, it ran for like four years. Yeah. Wow. On Disney XD and a few other channels. So, you know, Camp Lake would be, it was almost like a family. At some point, it becomes very, you very familiar. It's, yeah, you spent a lot of time together. Then COVID hit. That was obliterated that. I and so then what happened is, how quickly can you get a home studio done in your place? Yeah, to work. To work. Yeah. And so, pre-COVID, so I live in a place called Barrie, Ontario, which is an hour and 20 minutes outside the heart of Toronto. Yeah, the GTA okay? still? Yeah. Yeah. So... Normally, my day would start, I have a cartoon. Let's say my call time's at 10. Uh, let's say 11 o'clock. I'd have to leave my house at 9. Yeah. No, but I because of the traffic, yeah, I'd yeah. have to leave at 9 a.m. Yeah. to get somewhere for 11, okay? Park my car. Fuck, that's LA, though. Okay? Jesus. Yeah, do the cartoon, which, you know, you do, it takes an hour or whatever, it's uh, even a half an hour, so 12, you know, pay for parking, and then drive home again, get home around 2 or 3. Okay. So it's about a six-hour day. Yeah. Because sometimes it's only 20 minutes yeah. in the studio. Because it's line after line after line after line. Right. No time to take reset. Just go. Just go, right? Then COVID hit, and now I have a studio in a closet at my house, and it's got a $2,000 microphone and a setup that I've created myself, and it sounds just as good as a studio, and not to tap you know my own horn a bit here, but and I'm go not ahead. new. Yeah, so yeah. I know I can do it to the same level. Yeah. It'd be probably a little bit different if you were starting out and then COVID happened, but I'd already been doing it a long time. I know the ins and outs. And so now my day is literally, I get the script a couple days before, I spend an hour or two on the script, I figure it out, depending on number of lines. Five minutes before my call time, I open the door. 12 minutes later, I'm done my record. I open my door and I'm done. So is there a cost factor? 100%. You win a lot, though. But is there a life factor for me yeah. to not have to go in? 100%. Oh, yeah. No shit, man. So even for like radio commercials, I used to have to drive in from Barrie to downtown Toronto to audition Jesus. for two lines in a radio voiceover, Subway, Eat Fresh. So I'd have to do all that six hours to get down there and get there early enough, wait, do my audition, drive all the way home for an audition. You don't Park know, my don't car. Know. Yeah. Now, audition, I open my closet, yeah. I close my closet, three minutes later, my audition is done. So that's, that's kind of what the world is like now post-COVID. So I still go into Toronto. Yeah. Like I, I tell them, if you think it's going to be better in Toronto, Let's do it. I'm I'll, I'll come in. I'm coming. But if you've worked with me before and you know how I can do it at home, and I've worked with almost everyone I can in Toronto from a, a director right. standpoint, they know I can hit the marks from home. Yeah. They know I live in Barrie. You know, maybe come in every like eighth episode just so we can see you and you know say hi. And, <laughs> yeah. and, you know what I mean? And, and you're real still. You're, yeah. You're, you're, yeah. You're a human over there. Okay, but that's yeah, kind yeah. of what's happened now post COVID. 
with the cartoon world. And you can see that obviously being a standard now because everybody in the world. Why would it go back? Yeah. Why, well, yeah, you, and, and I mean, like, oh, you, you need a studio. So even if you're traveling somewhere, you just need to get your hands Like, I don't know what's going on in LA because I'm not in LA yeah, 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 or yeah. whatever. But I wonder if, like, the cast of Futurama is still going into a studio or a cast of a big, like, Bob's Burgers near the end. If they went, I don't know. I, don't uh, know. I would assume not, and they just would do. Now, also, cartoons are great because it, the money's good and it's very little time. Yeah. And you can do it through a pandemic. Yeah. So as the rest of showbiz yeah. shut down, yeah. I was doing all right. That's fantastic. As all my friends had to take stir because, like, stand up just was obliterated. Yeah. I'm still going into my closet, you know, once a week doing my cartoons. Sending it in. So that was a, not a plus, but it, it saved my saved my ass. Yeah, that. it's one of the many things the industry figured out and some of the things that came out of COVID. I mean, that's 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 one of the pluses you could definitely yeah. say. Yeah. Um, and and they don't have to go in either. Yeah. No, I mean, the people behind the, the editor, board, right? like the yeah. editor. Well, the board guy is still. The, just so you know, when it's beamed in, they're still using that same studio. So they're still using that master track board or whatever because it's they still have to do all the bells and whistles. They're just not using the little room through the window where the actor goes and right. stands. Yeah. So that means even the director doesn't have to be there. The director can do it from home because they're just patched in and they can be like, okay, do it, Darren. And it's like, that's how it works. So it kind of benefits everyone. Do you get to insure your vocal cords? No. <laughs> no, unfortunately, no. they won't let you do it. No. I mean, I've never looked, but yeah. I, I, I'm sure I'm sure you could. Like it's your it's your voice box. Yeah, I mean, right? Catherine like, Bach, you know, insured her legs in the '80s for right? good to That's so. what I'm saying. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you could. It's a valuable fucking. Answer. I'm sure you could. Um, how do you like? You've done a lot. You've done kids shows. You've done some young adult. You've done yeah. some adult humor. Yeah. You've done feature films. Like you're all over the map. Yeah. How do you figure out your character? How do you figure out the voice? So when it comes to figuring out character, first of all, on camera. I mean, it's janitor number four, and he has five lines. Sure, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's like I'm sorry, hate to bust every casting director's bubble. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I'm too far in. I'm like, I think I can nail janitor number four. Yeah, you know, kind of thing. But when it comes to cartoons, it's really based on how big the um, the character is sure. and how much information they give you. Sometimes it's just like you know, snooty kid bully. Yeah. Well, that's my hit. I've done that for three decades. Yeah. I don't have to do much work. But sometimes they'll give you like a paragraph or two, and it's a really fleshed out character. So then I'll have to look at that. And I'll have to go into my you know, little pod at home or whatever and, and go through a couple different voices. And that's the other benefit to post-COVID. My auditions, it used to be you got one shot. You'd go into a room. Yeah. Give it all your, the people yeah. are there. Yeah. And if you screwed it up, they might let you do it again. Or they might give you a little bit of direction, but you got your one shot. What what is like that is the standard format for any casting? And yes. Is it, is it because it you just want to be shocked and then impressed and entertained by that performance? And you're like, that's it. Because I find not being given at least one or two directives mm -hmm. when you don't know anything yeah, beyond yeah, yeah. this is the character. I used like to that? book a lot more yeah. pre COVID than I have post COVID. Sure. Because, uh, you know, I'm a funny guy, uh, I'm kind of animated, I can make little jokes before, and these are all things that play into they whether help. you get booked or not. Right. It's yeah. just a fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Do they like you? They already like you, and then when you bring a character, you know, you go Your in with a bad attitude. It's easier yeah. to meet you in person. Yeah. yeah, you go in with a bad attitude, you can have the greatest voice, but sometimes nobody wants to work with that. Right. Right? Like, oh, totally. I worked this, I did this show... You know, this guy was terrible, but you know, we got to bring him in because he's got a good agent, and you know, they'll listen. You know, but they're going to be fighting themselves to book that person. Yeah. So when you this new thing, it's just your voice. The new way to audition. There's no interaction. There's no hey, how you doing, Larry? How's your kids doing? There's none of that. Yeah. It's just Darren Frost, you know, bully. Here's what I got. And ah, and the voice. That's it. Now, from a purist standpoint, it's it's voice against voice now. Yeah. Right. It's simple. Very little nepotism. Very yeah. little. They worked with this person before. It's like I'm hearing this voice, and this voice is better than that voice. And that's all you. That's, 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 that's what it's based on, right? Right. Yeah. It's not based on how you looked or what you were wearing that right. day. It's, right. It's, it's like purely the voice. Yeah. There's got to be and, a little comfort in that, I guess. Uh, I mean, I book less, but I don't have a problem with it because at least it's more fair. Right. 
That's very positive of you. You know, I've had my run. I yeah. mean, I, I've had my run. If everything stopped tomorrow in cartoons, I never grew up going, I want to be a cartoon or, you know, voiceover guy. I kind of fell into it. And there are a lot of people that do a lot of voices. And I've been with these people, and they're really good. You know, I'm just lucky that my three kind of hits are always in cartoons, but they're not lead roles. All the big dogs want the lead role. I yeah, don't. Yeah. I want, just so you know, anything six lines or higher, you get the same money. Interesting. Union. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I could, I don't know if I can swear on this thing or not. Absolutely. Give two fucks. I could give a flying fuck if it's a lead <laughs> or it's a little character that pops in every episode and does seven seven lines. They hit that six lines and above. I get the same money. What do I give a fuck? You no shit. Absolutely. You can go I, home earlier or open I, your closet. I, I get, I, my, my day's done in eight minutes. When you do a lead, it's a lot of pressure. Yeah. It's a lot more weight on your shoulders. It's longer scripts. It's like they're really worried about like tone and yeah. the arc of the character. When you're Larry the Lizard in a, you know a, an animated show about animals, and Larry the Lizard's just an angry guy that pops up and screams six lines, there's no arc there. Yeah, no, it's it's you you you're the fun. You're the, you're yeah, the punch up. Yeah, yeah, and I know and I know how to do that. Yeah, and I'm sorry, but I'd rather I'd rather do that. You've been doing that forever, right? And I've done shows where I've done like a six line thing. And after I walk out of the room, they're treating me better than when I've headlined a comedy club for a whole weekend. <laughs> six lines. And I was in there six minutes. <laughs> and I did it twice. I love this industry. And they were like, they were, this is why I, I will never shit on animation. You know, they've always treated me like amazingly well for someone that kind of fell into it, you yeah. know? And I've been treated shitty on the other side, on camera, in stand-up. I know when I'm doing good work and no one's acknowledging it. You can do an okay job in animation, but they're just happy that it's all working out. Yeah. They're very positive, for the most part, people. And I'm like, you know what? Uh, if you ask me if I could only do one, I would do stand-up. But if I can find something that helps me fund my ability to do stand-up, that is also great, then I'll keep doing yeah, cartoons every single not, day. Man, fill your yeah. booth. Because unfortunately in, in Canada, stand-up will not pay your rent at the way it's going. So everyone has to have a side hustle. So my side hustle is cartoons and a little bit on camera. So that's my side hustle. Thank you for talking to us on my side hustle. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you know, you got to have it you if you want to stay it. in this business. I've been doing it 32 years. No, there's not a single performer that I know that's been in that long that doesn't have some kind of side hustle outside of what they're known for. No shit. Yeah, no. Totally. Whether they're writing on a show yeah. or they're behind the scenes on a show or whatever. Like fucking Brett Goldstein from Ted Lasso. Yes. I just found this out this week. He went on as a writer. Roy yes. Kent yes. was a writer. He was a stand-up. Yeah. He actually did a movie that he uh, funded himself. Yeah. Uh, you should search it out. I can't remember what it's called, but it's about a superhero. And uh, yeah, then he got Ted Lasso as a writer. Then he came in and it took off. He and that's the star of the character. It's fucking Roy Kent. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Roy Kent. Sent the self tape to the EP, the EP, and he's like, "If you don't like this, I don't even want to talk whatever, about it. Yeah. I don't want to talk about it." Right. But then they were like, "We love it, so you're on." Um, what's the hardest voice? Because you choose. So Japanimation is always the hardest, because the problem with Japanimation is the lot of yelling. Okay. Yeah. If you ever watch yeah, Japanimation, I, I it, unless it. unless it's like um, Dragon Ball Z fan. Well, right? yeah. Big so guy. so unless it's like um, some kind of like a Pokemon, where it's little cute things. <laughs> Yeah, that kind yeah, of thing. That's, pretty good. that's not hard on your voice. But I'll tell you what's hard on your voice. Please do. Four yeah. hours of going back to God, brawl! <laughs> Hadouken! Fire! Yeah. Stand! You know, you're tasting blood yeah. by the end. Go scary. And that's hard. And that's one of the reasons why I actually got out of Japanimation for a while. I kind of came back again a couple years ago. But it's because what would happen is I would blow my voice out and then I could work for two or three days because my voice was too right. rough. Yeah. And so that was actually affecting my bottom line, not just in cartoons, but in stand-up as well. Because sure. I couldn't no be talking, no talking. No talking. No talking. Um, so it's very it's very hard. Ignorant question, is everything in Toronto for what you were doing or did you ever go over to Japan? I never went over to Japan. Never went over to Japan? Okay. No. Um, out of all of, like, because manga is making a resurgence. Right? Oh yeah. And like it, like Netflix is. Yeah. Picking up tons of stuff. It's cool yeah. to like cartoons again. It is very cool. But to like the cartoons. other thing about Japan animation, it, it's so cheap for them, because they've already made their money in another market. Right. So just putting English voices on something that's already done, everything's already done. Yeah. This, this, yeah. this adding the English dub 
is like one twentieth of what their budget was for actually producing a real cartoon. And it's just for us over here and everybody else. But yeah, here, but it's right? a giant market. Yeah. And it's huge. Yeah. For a tiny little thing. And so it's like when Netflix first started or any of these things, um, they only had a couple blockbusters, but they had a ton of like documentaries yeah. or smaller right. movies. Yeah. Because one Captain America could pay the same as it would cost them they could 40, get three hundred documentaries. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. So in the beginning, Cost Netflix really kind of front loaded a bunch of stuff that it's like kind of weird and smaller because they wanted the breadth, right? Yeah. Yeah. Same thing with cartoons. Now, and Netflix, this whole Korea explosion yeah. of all these shows. SK and it's like everything. Shows, yeah. You know, they're yeah. all because they've already made their money in their market just and it's just to, a redub. Yeah. It's an upcycle, literally. It's turning something into something else for everybody else in the fucking world. You know, and especially these like Love Island and all these reality shows it's just you know the circle france and the circle brazil you know they're, they're they know how to do it now it's a worldwide market and they know how to make money well yeah because they get our analytics and they see what yes. we like and they see what we scream and yeah what are your tricks and trades to keeping your main tool in check like how do you i, I honestly don't have any really no no no, honey no i don't and i scream a lot on stage doing my stand-up so people <laughs> are always surprised but um i don't know i've, I've just been lucky I mean, I don't look. I don't drink okay. for the most that part. Probably helps. Yeah. Uh, I don't do. I've never done a single drug in my entire life. It's whatever you want to call it, straight edged or whatever. <laughs> so that also helps. I never smoked. So that's another big thing. So a lot of that is. Look, I like to eat out. That's my thing. That's yeah. 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 You know what I mean? Like that's my vice I food or whatever. There. But all those other things that can affect your voice, I don't do. So. What? What's the hardest voice you've ever had to come up? Because you've chosen to to. Fit a character with a voice. Yeah, you and ever, then you, you regret your, doing. Have you ever hung yourself? It. Yeah, and then you regret doing it because it's like they like it, but you're like, yeah, fuck. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do this for 30 episodes or 100 episodes. Yeah, was that, yeah. What, what character was that? So that you? was one of the first times that happened was with Bakugan in season one. It was a character called Shuji, and he was the main bad guy. And he's actually in, in one of the Wii actual games, so I okay. had to do that as well. But it's not like this. It's like a really growly oh, oh. thing, and you know. You're screaming like that for a two hours, three hours. It's like just does your voice in. And so now I try not to give an audition where it's something That'll I can't stream. do yeah. for 60 episodes or 100 episodes and wreck my voice. Yeah, because they go, no, 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 we like that. Right. And we want to pay for right. that. Right. We want to pay for the... the it's boundary. like seeing a celebrity do something stupid and then them complaining. It's like, don't give them the footage. Yeah. Don't act stupid in public. Yeah. You know, go to your own home and act stupid. But if you give them the footage, same thing. Don't give them the audition. You're going to TikTok right? the fucking shit out of it. Yeah, you know, if you're going to give them the audition, then feel like oh, that you made the mistake, not them. They're like, this is what we want. Interesting. This is what you get paid for. That's, man, I... It makes a lot of sense. It does make a lot of sense. Uh, going from comedy and then getting in, like, what is the the lore of the voice acting world? Like, are, are there... Are there big names that as you've come across it, you're like, this is the god of voice acting or this is the god, like, who's who's the creme de la creme in that industry? Outside of the Simpsons and Futuramas, like... Yeah, I mean, there's anyone that's on My Little Pony okay. is pretty big right now, like Tara Strong, I think her name is. Yeah, and, she's huge. Like, she, she's huge. She she's Canadian. Oh, okay, yeah. She's Canadian, you know, made a really huge um, career out of that. Uh, and then, you know, right now, all the Paw Patrol... Okay. Paw Patrol is a worldwide phenomenon. Yeah. And, uh, and it's good, driving parents crazy. Of course it is. Um, but uh, a good friend of mine plays two of the main roles. Nice. And so he's getting a bit of pop from that. Um, and now also because of these comic cons in the last 10 years. We get to meet We get people. access to you. It's kind of like opening up this whole, like nobody knew what voice acting was. No. 15 years no. ago. Like, you didn't know who voiced Rocket Robin Hood or He-Man back in the 70s or 80s. No fucking clue. Right? And then, you know, you go to this comic con, and it's an 80-year-old dude signing pictures, and you're like, holy fuck, that's the guy I oh, rocked as a kid. Him. You know? Yeah. Poorly so, said. <laughs> so, I mean, this comic con revolution <coughs> has also helped. So it's creating a little bit of a star-type system. I remember seeing the cast of The Simpsons on Inside the Actors Studio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Two-hour special. The yeah. first hour was... Your Nancy Cartwright, and then the second hour was everybody responding in their character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just Great idea. seeing that, giving some sort of humanity to a voice, because up until recently, with the with the Cartoon Network resurgence, 
Yeah. I, not even Surgeon's Boom, I guess. It's not even Cartoon Network anymore. It's even all these, um, the uh, streaming uh, yeah. is taking over for car the cartoon world. Like more than half of the, more, like 80% of the cartoons I'm auditioning for now are all streaming. streaming. Really? Yeah, they're going to they're gonna take over. Well, sure. and I mean, it's because it's, you know, it's the babysitter, right? And every one of them's got the kid-based programming. Yes. Which which brings me to an idea, like, or a question, I should say. Um, I would imagine there's, is, is there a lot of focus on the message beyond the character when you're doing some of these kid shows? Um, what was the so, one? Like, uh, you played the toy truck, or you played a vehicle. Was yeah. That, what was that? The, the name of the Chuck, Chuck and Friends. Chuck and Friends, yeah. Like... The, the dynamic of making a kid's show is a bunch of adults are in the room who are doing the voices. I imagine, you know, you cross some... some so here, here's, here's where I might actually get into trouble, but, you know, I'm going to say... Tell it me to edit, it. I'll edit, but... No, 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 no. <laughs> I already told you. Anything I say is fair. So when people ask me what was your favorite cartoon that you ever did, okay, right? Yeah. Um, it's a long way to answer what you're talking about. Please take but the time. But I, I, I say it's always Timothy Goes to School. Okay. I watch always. that as a kid all the time. And people go, why? You know, you've done all these other shows that, you know, have fans and everything. And I'm like, because that show was for little kids to teach them very sweet messages. There was no toys. There was no trying to sell anything. No trying to sell anything. It was all about being a nice person and, you know what I mean, teaching little kids things. And so you actually kind of felt good that you're in a show like this. Yeah, it's a positive spin on it. Right. You're teaching yeah. the next generation valuable lessons. It was also my first show that I was a regular on and I'm kind of learning the ropes. So, you know, it's like... It's a certain moment in time. It has a place in your heart. Yeah. Then we talk about Chuck and Friends. <laughs> now, there's nothing wrong with Chuck and Friends, but right. the problem with Chuck and Friends is that was already a toy line before the show so started. So it's baked in. You've got the baked in on So you know that... I'm not saying their heart wasn't in the right place and the scripts weren't good and whatever, but it was already a toy line. Yeah. So the show... Had to follow... I'm thinking had like, let's sell some toys. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm I'm a I'm a business major before comedy. I get the business of it, but that doesn't always lead to good television or good cartoons. Batman no. and Robin. You know, <laughs> um, if you're trying to sell toys. Yeah. Right. So that's the biggest complaint about Paw Patrol right now that the parents don't like because of all the toys. Right. The kids right. keep badgering them for the toys. But at least Paw Patrol, it started. And then it exploded. Yeah. It wasn't like a, a bunch of toys, Paw Patrol, and then they made it. Now there's more toys. They're going to sell a bunch yeah. of toys. It's the He-Man story. He-Man was a toy, and then yeah. it was a show. Yeah. And, and they, yes, that yeah. they wanted to kickstart the, the toy line. Exactly. And sell more toys, which, you know, of course, was the smartest idea for them. Um, it's still words. a business. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're asking me from an actor yes. point of view, I'm like... Not your favorite. <laughs> not my favorite. Okay. That's, yeah. And That's I mean, it, it, it's a little greasy. I would imagine at some points, right? Like you know, art versus commerce, art versus. Commerce. It's only greasy if the scripts are so obvious <laughs> that they're just trying to sell toys. Like every week we got a new truck, and it wasn't that. <laughs> it wasn't that. Yeah. And every person I worked on it were good people. Yeah. And they treat everybody well and stuff. It just reeked of. Are we just trying to sell toys here? Because it was already a toy line. Yeah. That yeah. model, which I'm not really comfortable with. It, the toy itself, or just no, the, just the, the idea <laughs> that yeah. we might be selling kids toys. That's what the the end result yeah. is of this cartoon. Yeah, no, you don't want to be. You, it, I get it because I was that kid when I was little. I'd be like GI Joe, GI Joe, right? Right, it's right. It's too. Sergeant Slaughter, but with a new toy kit. So mom's yeah, yeah. wallet's empty. And yes, says, Michael and was an only child. Yeah, I was. So <laughs> yeah, I, I got whatever. Like I remember, I was in England once. Yeah. Second time, I'm fine. Uh, I was in England once. Not England, sorry. I was in uh, Cuba once, and this British family was there. And when the Brits go to Cuba or anywhere like that, sometimes they go for two full weeks because it's a bit of a journey. Yeah. So this kid was there, and he goes, he's got a couple of Paw Patrol toys. And this is like five years ago, six years ago. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's cool. And the dad goes, oh, you like, you know, Paw Patrol? He goes, yeah, yeah. And Eddie, show him the Paw Patrol. And he goes beside the, the, um, the seat that he had, beside his dad, and his dad's got a hockey bag. A hockey bag. Fuck. <laughs> full of Paw Patrol toys. <laughs> That's insane. Like every Paw Patrol toy there is. Like <laughs> fucking hell. cars, three different accessories. Everything. Everything. The, everything. The Chinese like, version of it. I didn't off. even I didn't even know there was this many toys of Paw Patrol. Like I've been in a toy store, I've seen the Paw Patrol, but yeah, what the made. fuck is this? Yeah. No. Like I'm just like, oh my god, like this is like easily a thousand dollars. If not more. Bag. 
in this bag of Paw Patrol toys. Dude, and I can just imagine that kid. I want this. I want this. I want this. Because they're at that age, right? They don't yeah. understand. I they saw, just ask and want. I saw that at Galaxy's Edge in Star Wars. My my wife took me for a surprise visit to my birthday, and I bought the two hundred and seventy five dollar American. It's a nice lightsaber. American well, lightsaber. I, I was just there. I know the lightsaber. It's yeah. a nice lightsaber. I watched a dad buy two of them for his kids. Yeah, yeah. We're like, I want, I want, I want, and like, you don't play with these. Yeah. Two minutes <laughs> yeah. outside of the of the room, they break them from hitting them against each other, and then he looks at dad, and it's yeah. like. So I totally get, you know, you, you, you want something to have a message or to have a soul or to have a, at least a, a, some sort of, you know, true north behind it. And, and it's not even it always doesn't have to, but if it goes the other way, then I'm kind of like, I'm, look, I'm not going to lie. I'm st- I still cash the check. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, totally, like, yeah. I'm a hypocrite. I still cash the check. <laughs> we all are. But you just ask me what I feel comfortable with. Yeah. And sometimes we all have to do things in this business that we're not always comfortable with. We got a fucking with, mortgage. And yeah. the money and I got kids to feed and whatever, you know, like. Uh, you know, uh, there's so many stand-up gigs that I've taken that I wish I didn't, but the money is the money, and that's, you know, if I don't take these things, then I'm going to have to be a Costco cart wrangler, and that's not a bad thing. No. They pay well. I know yeah. they do. <laughs> they um, pay very well. You said Baku was the one that was hardest on your voice. Was that the hardest one you've ever done, or was there something that was really... Yeah, I mean, that was that is the hardest. Yeah, and either Japanimation is very, very hard on your voice, um, and, and like I said, it's not like... You know, you've got this character that you... I don't even understand his riffs. <laughs> like, so that's that's the other thing. <laughs> I love it. That's the other thing. Just so you know, when you, when you do a non-Japanimation script, you get the whole script. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, like... And, and there's, like, direction, like... And then uh, Johnny jumps over the fence and says, Hey, what are you doing, Larry? And Larry says, Oh, I don't know. What are you doing? So there, it's an actual, like, a movie script. So yeah. you can get in the head of the character and that. A Japanimation script comes... With just lines, and names, pretty much, right? and a tiny bit of direction, <laughs> but nowhere like this. No exposition, no. You know, no, like no it's just like you yeah. know, there's a little bit of a you can kind of, but it's like, I, okay, <laughs> like I, I don't know what this globe is, but I'm really mad about it, you know, and I'm like, okay, this is my character. Anybody who wants to get into this, what would you say is a good place to start? Like. You said you fell into Take it through class. commercials. I, I, would, I would always suggest taking a class. I think it's important. But I would always say make sure you find out who the teacher is. Make sure that they're either one of two things. Either someone that's still working. Okay. So they know what the industry is asking for. Yeah. Like still working. Okay. Or they're in casting. Okay. Right. So they know what the audience wants. Or they're working and they know what the di- casting director wants. You got both sides of it. Yeah. Um, is it is it tough? Is it is it... Is it, have you seen it change over the years? Is it getting tougher? I mean, it, yeah, it, it, the, the problem is with COVID, a lot of people got into cartoon oh, voices. Ah, so it shifted. Right? So what happened is a lot of stars yeah. weren't working, so they, t- they took gigs on cartoons. And so that top talent now moved down a bit because now the top roles are going to stars. Yep. So now the top talent is taking the secondary roles. And the people that would normally get the secondary roles are now doing like plumber number three it's, with three lines and so on and so on. And that never really went away because once the stars realized how kind of cool cartoons are, like you've got kids and how easy it is and yeah. how fun it is, like why wouldn't you do it? Right. No, I, I if I if thought John Ham wants to do a voice on your show, it's hard to say no. Right, because that's going to get you press. Yeah. And anything to cut through to get your name out there now, you know. Well, and yeah, who's there first with the best idea and the funniest fucking line is 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 the winner. But star power is important. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I mean, you look at. You know, you look at the archers, right? And yeah. you look at the Simpsons, you look at the Futuramas, yeah. like but it's ta- it's it's so weird because like it's taken forever for people to realize Hank Azaria was a poo before the Apu scandal. Oh right? yeah, I like, know that. Like people don't they, they, they just don't connect it for some reason. And I and right. I hate that it I hate that it seemed like that because you're using one tool. You don't you get to be animated to mm. a- accentuate and get it to where you want it. But like Ron like Ron Lynch is in town this weekend. Yeah. Okay. From Bob's Burgers really? and home movies and all those other, it would be interesting to talk to him because he would have more of an LA experience yeah. of how the business has changed. Because he was seen as someone that's you know it's on Bob's Burgers that was a, a good sized role. I'd be interested to see if because of COVID and all the stars where he is or maybe he's still fine. Right. I don't know, but that would be very interesting to me. Looking when you got into it, did you ever look back and like as soon as you were in the voice acting world and you were a part of it? What from your childhood 
were people still around that were doing voices that you kind of okay so this is this is amazing so um the one thing i always forget it's weird because when people what's your favorite show yeah it's timothy goes to school but tied to my childhood yeah there was a show called jojo circus okay and it was a stop animated show oh boy i fucking love stop animation like you know, Rankin, art. Rank, Rankin and Bass are my OGs. Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, all that shit. I used to, yeah, I yeah. collected all that stuff. I have Rankin and Bass encyclopedias. I have all of it. So when they did JoJo and I got a role, I was like, I told yeah. them, all, I'm like, this is amazing. Like, you don't dream. understand. Like this is stop anime. Yeah, stop anime. Like fucking like Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Yeah, this is not computer generated. It's like literally. I'm like, this is the fuck. This is the yeah. fucking shit. So that was number one. And then number two, I did a show called Willis Wildlife, and I did um, a role, and there's always there was always this older gentleman there in a blazer, like always dressed up. I'm wearing fucking you know, t-shirt and shorts, yeah, and grumpy, you know, and he's always got a blazer on. He's like dressed, and I'm like, okay, and I'm talking to him. Obviously, he's an older guy. He's been around the business, and I'm not sure if I realized this before he died, but so I worked with him a few times, and then he died, and I looked him up. And the guy had a career that was fucking crazy. He was on the Jeffersons. He was on this. He was on that. He was, um, you know, the Mario and Luigi live action. Of course. Yeah. He was the thin one. Which is that, is that Luigi? Yeah. yeah, Luigi. He was Luigi in that. In the OG 80s cartoon wow. live action wow. Mario and Luigi. I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck? That's insane. Like, I wish I would have known. Know. Yeah, to yeah, not know. You know. I don't know why I didn't Google him or whatever until later. Or I might have Googled him and I didn't see him again and then he yeah. died or whatever. But I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, How did I fucking stand in yeah, front of that? And yeah. not... But you know what? The guy's like, I think he was like 81. He could still do a voice. You know, yeah. why not? It's a good you know, like Gilbert Godfrey did voices till the end. You know, Gilbert, like that's... Yeah. Howie Mandel did voice. Uh, yeah. Bobby's World. Yeah. What are... What are some of your uh, your favorite voices that other people do? Like, what do you because I, you you ask a director to watch a movie or an actor to watch yeah, a yeah. movie, and then can they take themselves out of what's happening to just enjoy? What who what does you, the voice acting go to? So for me, the two cartoons. So there's three cartoons I think are the best of all time. It's my personal opinion. Obviously, the Simpsons. I don't think we have to even say that one. Um, but Reason Bob. Them that I not a big. But Bob Burgers stopped me from watching The Simpsons as a kid. I am. I have lost The Simpsons. I. I. I well, I, if you didn't watch it at a certain era in your life, I can understand people not liking it. It's tied to oh, a certain I era. I fucking love it. Yeah. I need to watch it so that these fuckers stop drilling me every time we <laughs> record that I never saw it. Anyway, right. Okay, we'll go on. Simpsons. So that. So uh, Bob's Burgers. Yes. Yeah. I think is an amazing show. Shot right to the fucking. Amazing top. show. So fast. You know Eugene Merman and I. I, I can't Perfect remember the cast. The girl's name. I feel bad. I should have. Oh, Kristen Shaw. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. So funny, you know, both did stand up. I mean, Eugene still does, it's kind of an alt comic in New York. Um, and then uh, I think that the best show in the last 20 years is Phineas and Ferb. And I would fight anyone to the death that would dis disagree with that. I, I don't disagree with like, you what, there. What, you see, I have been slowly putting more animation into my life yeah. because I'm a cynic and I like seeing yeah. the dark side of society. Yeah. Now, I get, I get Rick and Morty, that's for adults or whatever. Yeah. But this show is for kids, but adults can also love it. I think a lot of people in my generation would agree with you as well. So it's pretty refreshing to hear someone of your generation yeah. agree with that. Because I had kids, and I had to wa I watched tons of cartoons with my kids, and I'd always, you know, I'm trying to be the good dad, making sure I'm watching it's age appropriate. And I'm like, this show is so Funny. fucking good. And I've worked with people that also worked on that show, either directors or whatever. And I'm like, as soon as I work, tell me about Phineas and Ferb. And they're like, wow, how did you know I did that? I'm like. Like, and I know everything. You know? <laughs> I look at everyone I work with, and if I see Phineas and Ferb, I'm bringing up Phineas and Ferb. That's... How does the director work with you in the room? Because we, we, we all see the Entertainment Tonight clips mm -hmm. of you know, Nolan on set, not kicking chairs out from under people because no one's allowed to sit, right? right? What's your relationship to a director in regards to doing all the voice work? 95% like directors are great. Yeah. You know, you've already landed the role. It's a voice. You're, you're doing the voice. And they're just giving you like, you know, basic things like a little faster, right. maybe, you know what, not so angry in this part, or well, you know what, amp it up a bit. That's the average. Then, you know, I've had a situation where I didn't get along with someone and, you know, it almost came to like blows. Like <laughs> so most people in the animation world have no idea that I'm stand up. I don't mix the worlds. I don't tell people. Right. I don't ever say anything because I don't need it. Like, yeah. you know, I don't need someone Googling me and they then saying you're the devil. Thing, and, right. You know, because I've been fired. That's what happened in the cartoon world. I got fired because of my stand-up. 
and other things. So I don't need it to bleed over. And so, but a lot of the animation people behind the desk are a lot of ex-musicians, like that kind of well, thing. Well, this is all sound. Yeah, right? exactly. Like it's, right. you, you, you are, you got bass, you got treble, you got your high, you made your low, you right. got all your ins and outs. And like they it's... all, they all went to school for this to record their own shit at home. Yeah, right. So the reason I bring this up is because they're, I don't want to say they're rock and roll people, but they're kind of cooler than the average kind of industry people. And they, they know They watch stand-up. the Jagger snort coke off the mixing board. There so you they, go. You know, they, they're, they're and cooler so they, for that. And they, so they somehow, some of them found, no, I do stand up. You know what I mean? Mm. And so one time I was in a record and uh, the director was saying things that he shouldn't be saying to me. And I was saying things back and I don't normally punch back, but I already don't like this guy. Yeah. And I literally didn't care. If I got fired, sure, All because I'm like off. I'm arguing something that I know I'm right. Yeah, yeah. He was new, so this was a situation where they replaced the director season one to season two. I, that happens not for bad reasons. Season one the director may not be available. Yeah, right. They moved on to a bigger show. They have to replace. So this person was arguing with me about the slogan of the show. Now I've already done twenty six seasons, twenty six episodes. I've already screamed this slogan twenty six times a minimum. I know how the slogan goes. He's telling me the slogan doesn't go this way, so it's it's not getting good. No. And everyone else in the room knows about my stand-up history, and I'm not going to back down. And I don't, so they you know. You see a heckler at this point. They know I can be a cunt in like half a second. <laughs> like it's not even, like it's yeah. not even debatable. All bets are off. So okay. they're, they're all of a sudden, they're not looking at me anymore. They're all oh, trying no. to look down. <laughs> they're you know, cleaning. They're, they're like, they're oh my God, this is going to get so awkward. <laughs> then you start mopping the ceiling. Yeah, exactly. And luckily, we, it got really bad and really tense. And then, okay, wait, just wait a second, Darren. Turn the mics off for it, you know, and they're talking, and you see them talking, and I know they're playing from season one, the slogan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then he's like, uh, sh- oh, yeah, okay, Darren, yeah, yeah, you're, yeah, you're right, so just do it like that. Like, no apology, no nothing. That's weird. This, Fuck so off, that's, my, buddy. that's my attitude. So I literally walked down the hall after recording it. I called my agent, and I told them, I'm quitting this show. Done. That's not worth you. Yeah. I'm, I'm, it's not, it, I literally was getting like, I couldn't sleep at night. And I, I never had happened before. Like in stand up, it happens all the time. I work <laughs> with shady people, they're fucking idiots, whatever. But in this business, I've never had this problem before. He's not a well liked person already. There's other people that have bump heads. And I'm like, I can't handle this. This is the moment. Yeah. This is the moment. So my agent's like, oh, shut up, Frosty. You're just a fucking idiot. If you, can't, if you get fired, you'll get fired from all of this. Don't you know how this works? It's a very insular. And I'm like, I don't care. I don't care. So two days later, my agent calls me, and she goes, uh, well, you don't have to quit that show. And I go, why not? She goes, show's canceled. (laughs) Funny how things go, isn't it? (laughs) That's winner, winner, chicken dinner. Right. That's all day long. Like, you get to walk away. Your career's not tarnished. It doesn't look like you're hard to work with. And that guy never has a fucking job again because... Oh, he does. He still is around. he's still working? Okay. He's still around. (laughs) But every time I see a breakdown... With his name on it, yeah, I'm not doing that gig. No. Right, I've told my agent, I will not work with this director. And that's not hard. That's not hard to deal with. Like, no, if, that's a lesson. The, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's like if you ask anybody in stand up, fifty percent will say Darren's a great guy, fifty percent will probably say he's a cunt. I'm fine with that. <laughs> sure. Because stand up is my own thing. It's my own thing. I get to do. I get to handle my business anyway. If you ask anyone. In animation, 99.9% will be like, well, Darren's a nice guy. Then I still have clips on stand-up, and oh, my God. <laughs> I never knew. Like, oh, my this God. Doing that kid Oh, show? my God. Like, I'm sitting there talking about my kids with him, and he's, like, saying these horrible things. Like, nobody knows. It's so interesting. Except a few people that work the board, because I've been around right. them a lot, and they, yeah. whatever, they figured it out. Yeah, and then they, like, just keep it on. Yeah, we don't talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Did you have trouble separating those two things when you started? I mean, I didn't. Um, and luckily the business hasn't, right. but other aspects of the business has like on camera. Yeah. They have a problem like, like commercials. There's a reason I had to run and I haven't done a commercial in 10 years. They Google your name now. They, they see, see this. everything about you. Yeah. Huh. And they go, you know, we can't have a, a letter come dear Pfizer, the Listerine bottle called me a cunt. <laughs> yeah. At no, a show. Yeah. No, I get I, it. I'm business. I, I, everything's a business. Yeah. I get it. They but you know, I will tell business. you that. Commercials are just money. Right. That's all it is. There's yeah. no art in commercials. I don't care what you think you're making fucking Citizen Kane. You're not even making Citizen Gum. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I don't care. 
We're all just making money here. We can right. treat each other good, and I'm a this whore, a brand. and I'm a whore, yeah, and I'm yeah, doing yeah. it, and we're all agreed here. But if you start treating me badly, it's gonna fucking go down. Yeah. Right. And there's no need to because it's for Listerine, Everyone's right? on the same page. And yeah. I'm going to use that as an example. They treated me great. They eventually, you know, they fired me but because of my stand-up. But that's fine. You know, I, I always say this. I was the second Listerine bottle. I was the Val Kilmer one of the series. Hard and work. You know, broody, broody and hard you to work with. on your bottle? No. no. <laughs> we love Val. Yeah. We do love Val. But unfortunately, I'm running out of time. You are. You yeah. are. Yeah. So, dude, thank you. Yeah, yeah, my Honestly, pleasure, man. Yeah, yeah, this yeah, yeah. Great. Like, yeah, yeah. It's such an eye opener to know this side of the business. Yeah. And and thank you for taking time to educate us nerds and answer our questions. Yeah. yeah. What do you have coming up that people can follow? What, what's, what's if they go to my website, darrenfrost.com, yeah. all my dates are on there. Perfect. Uh, you know, I'm touring around. I'll be back in Winnipeg maybe in April of next year. Kind yeah, of dude, when you're back, let yeah. us know. Yeah. We'll have you over to the house. We'll put you in the studio and we'll just shoot. Yeah, shit. we should shoot more. Uh, there's all kinds of stories. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. No, I'm I'd, down. I'd definitely love to. And I'll put all your credits in the show notes. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, so turn that thing off and then I'll tell you. Oh, if you have any problems, dial information. Thank you for calling.